You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I come out of school when I was 12. I couldn't read or write. I used to, I learned to read or write through social media. I had Facebook. If I, if I never had Facebook, I wouldn't be able to read and write. My handwriting now is appalling. To look at it, like, you'd, you'd struggle to read it, to be honest. My dad's given me plenty of opportunities. Like, if my dad wasn't my dad, would I be where I am today? More than likely not. But he hasn't fulfilled them opportunities for me. I'll give you an example. Like, it didn't, but it could have affected people in a worse way. You know, it didn't, and luckily enough, everybody was very headstrong. But it could have could have affected people in, in, in a different way. Try to make a fool of you. In a sense, yeah. My goal uh, is, is to overachieve my dad, which is going to be very difficult. He's done extremely well, you know, but the thing is, I'm further forward than him when he was my age. Leaps and bounds, you know? He didn't buy his first park till I think he was 26, 27. I was, I was 18. Boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Alfie Best. How, How are, are you, you, Alfie? I'm good, James. How are you? Really good, thanks. Well, it's an honour to be on here and thank you very much for having me. Yeah, no, thanks for coming on. Fascinating story. Everybody knows about your old man as well, as well as his son. Multi-millionaires, businessmen, entrepreneurs. You've also done a bit of acting, I hear, as well. I have. I've done uh, I've, d I've done a film. I wanted one of Terry Stone's films called Once Upon a Time in London. I really enjoyed it. Listen, I don't think I'm going to be no... Uh, blockbuster A-list celebrity like but I enjoyed it it was nice to see how everything works and how they actually done it and actually the effort that goes into them films it's madness you know it would blow your mind yeah people don't realise that they may be sitting in the cinema for 60 no. minutes 90 minutes and they think that was great but some films take months years to make man it's unbelievable the production that goes behind it exactly your dad is known as the richest gypsy in the United Kingdom people say he's nearly worth a billion pound you're his son also entrepreneur you've been making money as young as you can remember but it's also fascinating to get a bit of understanding of how the mind works and how you make fortunes and money and and live that lavish lifestyle that you've got on social media well listen it's definitely not easy i'll tell you that much um but yeah he'd, listen i'd definitely say he's one of the richest uh, uh gypsies in england listen he's, he's very wealthy he's done very well for himself you know and to be quite honest with you it's just persistence how is that title is he happy with that title your dad uh I don't know. You listen. You one day he come in. Do you know what I mean? You can yeah, ask him yourself. Him do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. can't speak for him, yeah. but I'd imagine he is. You know. Yeah. I always go back to the start of my guest brother, where you grew up, and how it all began. Well, to be fair, I had a pretty normal childhood. Like you know, uh, I used to bo I box from a very young age. Love boxing, um, which to be fair taught me a lot in life. Just, I think it's a brilliant lesson for everybody. It teaches you discipline. You know, it's. Uh, it's, it's a brilliant thing to do, but I, I had a pretty normal childhood. Like I start, I come out of school when I was, I come out of school when I was twelve. I couldn't read or write. I used to, I learned to read or write through social media. I had Facebook. If I if I never had Facebook, I wouldn't be able to read and write. My handwriting now is appalling. To look at it, like you'd you'd struggle to read it, to be honest. Uh, then I come out of school and started working. I hired a driver and used to buy and sell. Um, industrial supplies and floor mats for shops uh, toilet paper anything that i could walk in anything that like you know people couldn't reject like everybody has to use toilet paper you know blue paper towel wherever i could get it from there's a few wholesalers that i got put in touch with and um from then on i've done that for about four or five years i've done a couple of, i've done like loads of businesses from uh for, from 12 to where i am now i've probably done 10 different businesses and thankfully i buy and sell watches now and i really enjoy it because like i say persistence all the other businesses and things that i've run i'm sure they would have been successful and they were successful while i was doing them but i wasn't persistent enough because i didn't enjoy it i believe you've got to do something that you enjoy and um in any case i uh i come out of school started i hired a driver bought and sold industrial equipment and then I started doing travellers parties and you know we've always had a, a fairly good name a fairly good reputation uh, 
quite a big reputation, you know, like a lot of people knew I was. And, you know, when Facebook first come about, like, it connected everybody. It was so easy to promote events. Like, because Facebook really only come out in, what, 2005 or something like that? Yeah. You know, so it was out for six or seven years, but it was still fresh, you know. And uh, that's what made me was travellers' parties. You know, I'd done one in a club. Uh, it done all right. I never earned no fortunes, like, because I used to keep the door or, you know, a percentage of the door. And the thing is, travellers wasn't allowed to go to many places, or especially not all together. So when there was an event on that they could all come to, you know, it, you, it used to get packed. And then as time went on, I ended up taking on my own club when I was 16. You know, it had a little bit of media attention, etc. And I tried running it as a normal club. Like, you know, not I'd, I'd let anybody in to, to an extent, you know, but I, I tried running it as, um, as, a, as, as a normal club, but it wasn't really taking off for me. Like the people I attracted was travellers, you know. So then, like, literally I was hemorrhaging money, hand over fist, like a club or, or a restaurant or anything that the overheads are massive. You know, and I was only a boy. Like, listen, I've always had my dad's advice. Never would he put his hand in his pocket and, you know, bail me out of a situation. He, he believes so much so that you know they're, they're the best lessons is cheap lesson if anything you know what i mean you learn like you know you get hit in the pocket you're going to learn you're not going to want to make that the same mistake again and clubs you know you've got rent you've got rates you've got uh like you've got staff wages you have to pay for the alcohol you know and sometimes it could cost you a fortune just to open the door you know and unless you've got people coming through the door and to be fair when i took it on i thought that i was just going to open the door and people was going to come in you know, I thought it was going to be as easy as that. I mean, there was nights I was stood there with me and my staff, not a soul more than that, you know. And uh, then after a while, but the thing is, not, nobody really wanted travellers' events. Like, I mean, you know, the licensing officers and people like that, they didn't want it, you know, they didn't want it in the area. Because, like, you know, some of them can be hassle, you know. But again, where, where are they supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? You know, I've had this problem as a kid. We can't all go places. We get turned around, you know, the, the discretion. And like, you know, as a license holder to a venue, you can turn anybody anybody down for any reason you want. You know, there's there's no law against it, which that that is up to them, you know, mm -hmm. how it is. And then I, uh, I put a Halloween party on for travellers, but I own the club now. Before I was doing it, somebody else owned the club. So I was only getting a percentage of the door. And then I put one on and I was getting the bar. And it was massive. It, it done so well. It's absolutely exceptional, and that's what uh, that's what really got me on my feet. To At be honest. sixteen, sixteen. Did you have that ingrained into you watching your dad, or was it just kind of in your blood to make a crust? Well, to be honest, I'll tell you what it is. Like I always get listen and Chris. I'm very thick skinned. It doesn't bother me what anybody says. It like you know that everybody's got their own opinion and I let them keep it. I, I believe everybody should have their opinion. It's great, you know. Everybody's going to talk amongst themselves. They can. I don't care, you know. But <clears throat> I like to do everything I can so I know myself, you know, because everybody said, oh, it was handed to him on a plate. He's done this, he's done that. You know, oh, his dad's give it to him. Look, my dad's given me plenty of opportunities. Like, if my dad wasn't my dad, would I be where I am today? More than likely not. But... He hasn't fulfilled them opportunities for me, you know. He he's he's he's, he's pointed me in the right direction. Like because after that, uh, after I had the club and after I'd done that night, to be honest with you, we got out of the club. We didn't have. Uh, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. To be honest, it's, it's not. It's not good. It's not uh, that nightlife is not good for me. You know, to go out. You know, you're drinking while you're at work. Listen, if you was uh, whatever you was doing, you wouldn't drink while you was on the job, and it's so difficult. Like, and I was 16, then I. I, I wasn't allowed to drink in my own bar. But, you know, just being out there and being around it and being amongst it, it's not it's not where you want to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And and if you're not on top of everything and, and watching, like, like, being straightforward, you know, people would take out the tills, people would take bottles, you know, it's, you've got to be there and see it. And, like, listen, obviously there's companies out there that have got it running like clockwork. I didn't. It's the first time I've, I've run events, I've promoted events, then gone straight from promoting an event to having a club. You know, and uh, yeah, like it's the, watching my dad at work and earning money has just been a massive part of our life. That's realistically, and it might sound very sad, but that's all that's ever mattered. You know, not even having nice things. The thing what matters was earning money and being able to keep it and being able to save it. You know, only the last, uh, only the last 
five years, I'd say, my dad's actually started to treat himself. Like if you was to look at him walking down the street, you'd never believe what he was worth, you know. And and recently he started to uh, relax a little bit and enjoy himself, and and too right he deserves it. But um, yeah, but like I say, he's, he's given me plenty of opportunities, uh, and like I say, but he's never actually done it for me. Like he's got an office full of staff. I can go there, I'm allowed to, to use them staff at my disposal, but never are they allowed to do something for me. If I'm not there doing it with them, it doesn't get done. Yeah, people can be given opportunities left, right and centre from people, but it's down to them to make the hustle and push towards to making it a success. Success isn't easy, but and it must be hard if you're doing well for yourself and people tar you with that, and oh, his dad's helped him, he's done this, that. People need to actually make it work themselves. I think there's a big percentage of people coming from private schools who have got everything as well and don't succeed in life. It's the ones who work their ass off and like you say, your dad will not bail you out, so you'll learn from that mistake. That's where your growth will be. We will not make the same mistake again. It's important to understand that success is a fucking mad thing, but it's a consistency of pushing towards achieving that goal which is the difficult thing because so many people quit we live in a softened generation it's actually so easy to be successful now because so many people are weak they don't want it they, 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 as soon as they hit that one obstacle they just start stepping back they don't want to face the failure anymore but then wow. they've already accepted the failure and you know that that that's that's why there are very few successful people in a sense you know, um, and I wish success on everybody. I hope, I hope, I wish I had the answer to it. And and my advice would be to anybody that's looking for success is persistence. That is it. Because the thing is, I think hard work beats talent every single time. To be honest, you know, talent will only get you so far if you're not persistent and you don't work hard enough. It's not going to happen. And you know, people say, "Are oh, waiting about for opportunities?" Listen, opportunities will come along. Opportunities will come along. But the clever people are the ones that create the opportunities not just grab them, you know? If you're creating them or trying to create one and then an opportunity comes along, bang, grasp it. Yeah. But try and create the opportunities, you know? Be around it, you know? Got to stay focused towards your goal. I create a goal and, and stay focused and don't let anything sidetrack you until you achieve that and then you raise the bar again. How was that then for staff? And Obviously, you must have had bouncers at the door and yeah. from a 16-year-old kid to be telling these people what to do, did they, did they follow suit okay or were they, some of them about like fuck off uh, uh listen of course there was some people like that you know and they're not it wasn't uh you know they wasn't brazen faced with it but again i'm sure they got amongst themselves and, and and you know chatted and whatever i don't really know but i had a a, a general manager that was obviously older because uh he was the licensee because obviously you got to have a licensee yeah. for a venue like that i was too young like there's nothing stopping me from owning it you know um, but I couldn't be the licensee because I was too young. So, like, you know, when it come down to telling them or anything what to do, he was the one usually to tell them what to do, etc. Unless I had wanted to have a word with someone. But, you know, it's very difficult try, a kid trying to tell an adult what to do. You know, it's, it's enough to make them want to turn their back. Like, as how old I am now, like, even though I've been through it, like, I wouldn't really want to be told to do what by a kid. You know, it's like it's as straightforward as that. I'm, I'd, I'd be sitting and lying if I'd sit and take it on the chin. Listen, of course you'd sit and listen, but to be told what to do. And I listen. Obviously, I was, I wouldn't. It's not. I wasn't aggressive. I wouldn't shout. I do this, do that, do that. I didn't abuse my power. Let's say. You know, I did kind of, in a sense, know my place. Knew that I was younger than them, and just had to kind of work with them. Like I tried to, like, like I said, I tried to work with them more than anything. You know, like I couldn't get behind the bar because I was too young. You know, but if it come down to mopping the floor, like, I'd get involved. I still will. Like, I've got two mobile home parks, which I'll come back to in a minute. If anything needs doing there, what I can do personally, I will go down and do it. I used to do drains, you know, which people think, you know, it's not the cleanest job in the world, but it is what it is. You know, if it earns money, I'm willing to do it. Somebody's got to do it, you know. When, yeah. That was when I was uh, uh, 14. I had a, a company that I had, me and a friend set up called Blockbuster Drains. You know, and uh, I was working out of my dad's office and we was doing okay. We used to work on rated people, but it just wasn't the job for me. It just wasn't taking off, etc. Who was that? Try to learn the trades and have businesses and you couldn't read, learn how to read or write? Like, was that a, 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 like a blockage there or was that enough to drive you on and, and concentrate on the things you were good at? Well, it definitely doesn't help. It's, it's definitely a hindrance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, from when I was... 
from when I was 14, I was reading fluently, you know, but then I couldn't write too well, you know. So, yeah, I had to try and make things as simple for myself as possible. And luckily, my business partner at the time could read and write. But I've, I've never let anything like that stand in my way, you know. Like, there's loads of things. Like, I'd try and educate myself the best I can to a job you know I'd sit and watch YouTube you know the internet's a massive thing now there's not a lot you can't find out on the internet you know it's mad man at fucking 16 I was standing in corners drinking and taking drugs and, and it shows but can be done at a young age to run businesses and, and keep your head screwed on because you're very sensible for what age are you now 24 I'm 24 still very sensible and got so many years ahead of you that I, I could only imagine what it's going to be like in the next 20 years 40 or 30 years where you're going to be like it's good to see and it's good to see people thrive and actually be okay about it and give the tools and techniques how they manage to create a business and learn from the mistakes, which is very important for people watching. And it shows that what can be done with work ethic, belief and, and just fucking straight hustle, man. Like from cleaning drains and opening nightclubs at 16, like it's mad to think that what can be done, especially this generation like I says earlier it's a weekend generation everybody's iPads and computers and they're putting on weight easy and they're sad nothing's impossible you know and like you see now when I look back at it I think like wow it's amazing at the time it didn't feel like nothing it just felt like every day this is what I've got to do to get anywhere in this life that that is what you've got to do you know day in day out you've, you've got if you want to be successful you've got to dedicate your life to something it's, 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 it's as simple as that how was it in the traveller community at 16 and 17 and growing up? Was there a lot more obstacles then because you were a, a traveller or was people scared to take risks with you? Um, at this age now, I had I had done a lot, to be honest. And I only, I tell you when it affected, it affected me with small minded people because my past would speak for itself what I've done. You know, I've turned businesses around, you know, from a young age. I literally turned them around. That club was failing. It was, was done. It was finished. And again, I couldn't make it work as a club. But I did turn it into a venture that earned money. Okay, yeah, it might not have earned money week in, week out, week in, week out. But over the time that I had it, the time period I had it, I put a couple of travellers events on there and it did earn money. So, you know, I, I used it to the best of my advantage and done what I could do. And to be honest with you, I could probably still do that with a, with, with a club or something now. Because no, like I say, travellers are not welcomed everywhere. It's not a good thing, you know. We are really the last race that still does get discriminated terribly. You know, and I think it will come to an end eventually, you know. But, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. Like I don't let it bother me too much. Why do you think that is? Well, we don't have a good reputation, to be honest. Um, and I do understand why. You know, we're not uh, uh, like you know with like what's happened in the past, and like you know, which ain't ain't like, we're not serial killers, etc. So there's good and bad in all people, you know. But the first thing you think of when you when you mention a traveller, a gypsy, or whatever, you think, oh, robbers. Do you know what I'm saying? Like scammers, whatever people think. I don't actually know because obviously people are not open with me, and they're not obviously going to say what they think. But you know, you can use your own imagination what people think. When people mention travellers. I know a few traveller boys, man, they're all 100%. You crazy know. bastards and not many get in their circle. Not many know what they're up to or what to do, but we all know they're capable. If the shit hits the fan, like, there's a, it's a very select community where nobody else gets in. Same no. as like, the triads. I'm not fucking saying they're the same, but the triads and that as well, like, nobody really gets in their, their circle or their families. Or nobody else, no outsiders gets in. Like, Everybody else is, everybody's outsiders and everybody's mixed and everybody turns on each other and fucking hate each other and snitch on each other. Like, you tend to see in other communities that like, nobody really gets in, especially the traveller community. No. Kind of got to be a, the family breed that's kind of in the bloodline. Where, but I know a few boys and they're fucking crazy bastards, but nobody really gets in their circle. Really, nobody really knows what they do, but they do it fucking well. Is that hard then, growing up then, like being... Not like an, like an outcast. See, I never looked at myself like an outcast. Yeah. I used to think I'm like, you know, I'm as normal as anybody else. It never really, as, to be honest with you, I actually believed it gave me more wit than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know? Why uh, did people know you were a traveller? Um, after a while, they, you know, uh, the, at the beginning they never, to be honest, but after a while I'd done a couple of television programmes because before, before, 
before I turned of age, my dad was like, no media. We don't want any media. You know, we don't, you know, we're private life, happy life, etc. Mm -hmm. Then after a while, my dad employed someone, I think, uh, I can't remember what his job role was, PR or something. And um, he said that it's good. Put yourself in the media. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're like, if you want to go places and you want to be at the top, that's what happens. Do you know what I mean? That's what it takes. So obviously Big Fat Gypsy Weddings, the programme, was a massive thing at this stage. And I put myself on it, which helped my parties massively because any travellers out there that didn't know who I was now did. Mm -hmm. You know, people that wasn't travellers wanted to come to one of these travellers' parties because I put it on my big fat gypsy weddings. You know, we've used it to our advantage, which was brilliant. I never got paid to do it. But, you know, it was great publicity. People still uh, uh, mention it to this day. You know, I was a young kid. Everything I've just mentioned was on big fat gypsy weddings. I've done three of them. I've done big fat gypsy weddings once, big fat gypsy fortune and big fat gypsy Christmas. You know, my dad come on it with me uh, uh, on the second one, and it's brilliant. You know, I've like I say, I'm I'm, I'm quite uh, I'm quite thick skinned. You know, I don't uh, I don't really care too much what people have to say. You know, and, and I, I don't. If you're not very thick skinned, then you do care what people say. The media and going on television or, or or any sort of podcast or YouTube channel is not the thing for you because there's always going to be someone out there that's criticizing you for some reason or another and i'm sure they've got their reasons and i'm more than happy for them to sit and criticize me and pull me to pieces i know where I've, i know what i've got to do and i know what i've got to do. i know where i'm going and i know what i've got to do to get there yeah you know and my goal uh, uh is is to overachieve my dad which is going to be very difficult he's done extremely well you know but the thing is i'm further forward than him when he was my age leaps and bounds you know he didn't buy his first park till i think he was 26 27 i was for, i was 18 it's fucking mad though isn't it yeah it is so see when those shows came out because everybody knew the fat big fat gypsy wedding like yep. how do you think that paints a picture of gypsies as well do you think people then instead of because there's a, so much more to the traveling community than the big weddings and people getting married young and um, people are out making money every day there's a lot of there's a bond and there's a, it's like a, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's because of the work that the travels put into survival and, and growth and, and educating themselves and some, there's so many successful people out there from the travel community as well. But how do you think that paints a picture of the traveling community? Are these, how do, how were you treated first of all, when these shows came out from the travelers? Um, Not bad. You know, people used to come up to me, congratulate me. You know, the people that didn't say anything, the ones that you used to question or whatever, but I didn't expect anybody to come over and want to shake my hand, etc. you know. But some people, you know, because they maybe did think it was good just to be polite, just because they wanted to meet you. I don't really know, but I, I never really got a bad response. Obviously, Twitter was a big thing then. And, you know, I used to get tweets, tweets, tweets all the time, you know, and I never actually used to get many bad ones, to be honest. Um... I had the trading stand. I used to buy and sell vans, right? And I, I genuinely had a personal van, which was my van. It was my own van, what I used to go out working in. And I was selling it to, uh, I was selling it to someone and he'd come to buy the van off me, but he never ended up buying it. I can't remember because I didn't have a logbook or something like that. And as a matter of fact, I'm saying this, I don't even know if it was him, but I'm quite sure it was, you know? But then when I went on... Uh, a big fat gypsy I can't remember if it was big fat gypsy uh, weddings or whatever it was it was one of the three and I was showing how I was now buying and selling vans like how I've come on etc and again it's brilliant publicity all for free if I'm going to do it I want to I want to gain something out of it you know so I show them my business you know that's what they want to come and see and uh, he rung the trading stands and said obviously that I was dealing vans but saying I was personal which this deal was personal because it was my van and again it was brilliant I was only a kid and my dad sat me down in front of the trading standards. You know what I mean? Listen, to be quite honest with you, I was shitting myself. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was literally yeah. shitting myself. I could, I cannot explain it anymore. My dad's like, yeah, you speak to him. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, you know, which, which again, I'm so happy that I've, I learned all these lessons young. You know, and I've done these things when I was young. Because please believe me, through this life, and this is one thing I know for sure, it ain't sunshine and rainbows. It is the hardest and most horriblest place. And 
anything is 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 obstacles 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 there's just there's no easy route to anything of course you know you can win the lottery you can have a touch you can invest in something like bitcoin it can go bang you know it's possible but you know realistically everything's hard there's no, there's no there's no quick fix to nothing you know how is that the pressure then from a young age did you feel pressure or did you did you kind of thrive on it to try and make things into a success it's got a lot harder as I've got older, to be honest. You know, because Why? because whatever I got back then, I was happy with. You know, whatever I earn now, it's, it seems like it's never enough. You know, like back then, like I was, you feel like you've got all the time in the world. From being fourteen to twenty-four, it's like that. I think of it like yesterday, like that. I can remember it fluently. Every every job I've done, like you know, some. Some days I wake up, you just don't know where the time goes. Yeah. You know? I'm 38 now, mate, and I'm fucking feeling it. Like, because I've got my head screwed on for the first time in many years, like forever probably, the last four years, everything's about business. Everything's about taking things to new level to not just have my own freedom, but give my kids and family the freedom that they deserve. But then even though I'm creating that now, I still want more. And part of me then thinks, are you becoming obsessed with business, success, but that's healthy, but that's why I've took a few weeks out there and I've kind of travelled the world as well. It's been amazing as well, but then I've been choking at the bit to come back, work and grind again and keep building and creating opportunities. That when, like you say, there, what is enough? It, it's like, you know, there, there, there's never a cut-off point. And the thing is, once you think it's enough, you want to take it to the next level. You want to go further. And that's a, that's a good thing. You know, it is. A, I believe it's a good thing. You know, everybody's got their own opinion. Some people are more than content, and I don't blame them. Going and live a nine to five, doing their things, spending plenty of time with the family. Like you know, with what I do and where I need to go, there is no routine. You know that, like you today, I could be sat here next one. I might have to jump on a flight and go to America. You know, there is no routine. Like you know, I can't make plans. You know, and. Um, yeah, it's, I don't think that's a bad thing. And, and and the thing is, you say you're 38, what like you know, you've started, you've done it, you've 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 got on the right road. You're on your way. To, you're on your way. You look, you, it's one of the best podcasts I've ever seen. You know, I mean, I've watched more or less every single one you've Thanks, put on there. That, that they are great. You know, and you've and you've made it a success. And and a credit to you. But um, you know, I watched a, a documentary one, a documentary once, and it had Morgan Freeman on it, and. Uh, uh, the, whoever was interviewing him looked up and said to him, are you not upset that, you know, you've got fame and come to money like so late in your life? And he looked at him and he went, well, no, not at all, because it didn't have to happen ever. You know, and I thought to myself, well, that's right. If that ain't enough, like, inspiration for someone to start, like, you know, that's if you want to take it to the next level or whatever you want to do. If you want to be massive in, in, in any area of your life. You know, like I thought, if that's not enough inspiration, yeah. like that's brilliant. Cause he was an old man. I think the Shawshank in his Redemption 40s or was one. Yeah, he never started acting until I think in his forties. You know, maybe and early fifties. I thought, 50s. I thought like, you know, like, what what a thing to say. Yeah, that does make sense. But because I used to think, smash it for five years, make a few million, and then disappear. But I don't want to stop because then I think, why stop? Just take things to levels, help people along the way, keep doing your thing, keep opening doors, keep creating opportunities, keep giving people a platform to tell their story and invite new people in. Like, it's just, everything's limitless to me. And it's about enjoying the journey. In the last few months, two or three months, I have been enjoying the journey because I felt as if I was working too much. But then look what it's got me. It has given me my freedom. It has given me better opportunities. It has given me better time with my family and friends. And that's a beautiful thing. And I'm only getting started with different things. And there's a lot of things that I do on the side that people don't know either, which I'll probably touch on maybe in a couple of years. But I want to get them a success first and then come out the woodwork and say, look, this is how I achieved that also. But success is a mad thing. You're never fulfilled, ever. My success goes by numbers and views and but you never, I used to think, I remember doing my first podcast and I, I was fucking so excited to hit my thousand views, buzzing. Now I'm fucking, then it kind of, you want a hundred thousand, then a hundred million and then it's mad. You just got to keep chipping away and raising the bar. So see when you're doing things and, and they're failing, what's your secrets to then turn them around? Persistence. That's all I can say is persistence. And, and, and you know, like, like you said, the easiest thing to do is turn your back. And I'll drown up and, and say, no, I don't want to do it. Like any business, 
you have bills chucked at your left, right and centre. You know, anywhere anybody can bill you and have some money off you, they're going to do it. Do you know what I mean? And anything that you're doing, you know. And it is disheartening. It is disheartening, you know. Um, but that, listen, there's no secret to anything. Obviously, it depends on the business. Thankfully, with the parties, for example, and, and the nightclub, I I had a reputation, like I say, for putting parties on because I've done parties before. And I, I took the opportunity, obviously, to put travellers all in one place, you know, which which helps. Um, the drainage company, again, I would be out at, six or seven o'clock we was called 24 hour service the last thing i wanted to do was get up out of bed at one or two o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was to get out and go and unblock a drain to be honest but you know i knew that's what it took to make the company work if you're calling it like you know there's loads of companies out there call themselves 24 hour you ring them up and say when you come in the tea they're coming the next day that's that yeah. do you know what i mean like come on and, and with a business you've got to build a reputation like you know listen social media is great don't get me wrong please believe me i love it you know, it's great. I'd, I'd look and it's connected me and you so easy. I'm not saying you wouldn't have been able to get in contact anyway, but look, bump, one message, yeah. you're in touch, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and, uh, uh, yeah, so there still needs to be that word of mouth. Like, oh, yeah, they're a good company, you know? And listen, we obviously, we worked around London. I've always been inside or very close to the M25 because I'm from London. Like, I was born in Redbridge, you know? And I think, uh, I think London's a brilliant place. Again, you meet some lovely people. But to be fair, I do think England's very restricted for 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 where I want to go. I think like when they say America's the land of opportunity, I genuinely believe it is the land of opportunity. Because listen, you've got 50 countries in one to go out, whatever you're doing. Yeah. You know, and I think to myself, hmm, like that's that's where I'd like yeah. to be, to be honest. Same for me, mate. I, I need to tap into there. America's where it's now just takes 360 million people there. Mm, this is what I mean. How many is here? 60, 60 million, 70, 70 million. Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's just like, what's that? A quarter? If that? 70? No, fuck's sake. So, like, I, I think to myself, would I be further forward now if I was in America? Because I feel, I feel, I don't feel very restricted. And listen again, I try and make it work, whatever I'm doing or wherever I'm at, you know. Like, I love business. I thrive off of business, you know. I, I thrive yeah. off of doing deals. It, it makes me feel good about myself. It's like a drug to me, if you like, mm -hmm. you know. Like, thinking, being on it, you know, it keeps you sharp. You know what I'm saying? Talking to people, having deals, etc. cetera. I, I, I do, I enjoy it. And um, but like I say, in America, there's just so many more people, so many more things to go at. Yeah. Right. That's what it's all about, though, isn't it? It's just taking things to new levels and new heights and... That's the beautiful thing about it, man. Like, that's that's where I need to tap into is America because it's a bigger audience. It's more doors opened and it's just another level of whatever the fuck it is we're chasing. What's the difference from a traveller's party to just a normal guy in the streets party? Uh, to be honest with you, they're all very smart dressed. They love a good time. Listen, they drink more than a lot of other people. <laughs> Please believe me. You know, like, yeah. cool. uh, like, I've never seen people drink like it, to be honest. You know, they love a drink. They love a get together. You know, listen, let me tell you something. Like, you know, they can get rowdy, do you know what I mean? But the thing is, it wouldn't. that's no different to the club you'd walk in and go in, 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 in West End, you know. Anybody can get rowdy. You can get an argument. There can be a confrontation. It happens. You know, um, but realistically, like, listen, there's a big difference if you was to stand there and look, you know, but to actually explain it, you know, listen, the girls are done up to the nines. They always come out looking lovely. Like, you know, they make an effort, you know, which is good. And maybe, I don't know, like, that may they make more of an effort than most, you know, like, listen, they still wear shirts, nice shoes, etc. You know, it's like the, the casual, like, listen, I'm not dressed the smartest, like, but, you know, it's the style, it's the trend. You know, like realistically, you're allowed to go in most restaurants or anything like this. But, you know, where's a collar and shoes gone? Like class. You know, travellers have still got that little bit, but people don't want to give them credit for that because they, they just don't like them. You know, there's something that's been set in their brain that there's something not to like about them. And again, there's, there's, there's good and bad in all people. What did you do after the nightclub? What did I do after the nightclub? I went and bought my first mobile home, uh, first mobile home park. Well, that was two years later, though. But let me think, what did I do after that nightclub? See, I've always been trading, like buying and selling vans, um, but I can't think what I've done after that. Where do you get the good deals from vans? Did you just I used to go to a van auction Yeah, in Leicester. Mm -hmm. 
to be honest. Uh, Vans have gone through the roof now. Back then, it definitely wasn't so easy. And, you know, the thing is, there was like a, 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 a time span that you had to sell it in because obviously they depreciate quick, like mm -hmm. any vehicle does. You know, we're in a strange time at the minute and that don't seem to be happening. Some cars are going up, but... Yeah, that's fucking nuts. Mm. Nuts. I don't, I don't know what it is. Maybe uh, less production or something. I don't, I don't really understand it. To be honest, I'd, I'd like to look into it. But yeah, I get told twenty different things, you know, and mm. it, you know, I'm searching too deep into it doesn't really affect me either. I know there as long as I, uh, you know, if I've got a car, I obviously want it to go through yeah. the roof, you know. Um, but see, I bought my first mobile home park not long after that. Uh, because I got a, a mobile home park in, in Basildon, which was my first one, you know, which again, my dad found the mobile home park, but come to me and said, right, you know, let's have a sit down. What money have you got? Do you know what I mean? Because again, I like to try and keep it private. You know, sometimes, you know, I'd probably come back and even lie to him and say I've earned more than I have. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? To try and keep him happy. And my dad's not the type to be pleased very easy, to be honest. And, um, you know, he said, right, well, if you can round up, such and such amount. We we'll see if you can get you a mortgage. We introduced me to his bank manager, which um, which he sat me down and after a couple of took, went through the full process, you know. And obviously, my dad was a guarantor, like you know, but not nothing on paper. My dad's obviously just got such a good relationship yeah. with the bank that like it was genuinely a handshake for them. Like you know, they never had nothing to worry about. You know, my dad's got twenty sites out, maybe even more than that, with. Uh, with these people, which is HSBC. And then um, I bought my first mobile home park. And to be honest with you, there's not actually a lot for me to do there. It's not enough to keep me busy, you know? And, and that was a very small one. And uh, in any case, I got a pass for a mortgage. I ended up buying the mobile home park. And then, and then I'll tell you what I done. Uh, after that, I ended up buying another one, or maybe another two years down the line. But to be honest with you, there has been a couple of years in my life where I've gone, you know, a bit AWOL, you know, going out a little bit mm -hmm. too much. Like, listen, for me to go out, truthfully, I get hangover. I'm in bed for five days. Yeah, you not know? To fuck out, you it's just like, you know, like, you know, and do you know what? I do you something mad. Every time I go out and have a drink, like, my my thinking changes to how it was the week before. I mean, changes. Like, how my, 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 oh, it's a difficult one to explain, like, but I don't feel how I was feeling the week before about something. Like it could change my mind about something, you know? Mm. Like I could have my eyes set on something and bang, go out and have a drink. And listen, I, I believe in enjoying myself. I keep it in, in, in moderation, you know? It's not it's not a problem for me. Like It's a confidence that goes the winner. It fucking hits that central yeah. nervous system. So that idea, you're putting that in the back burner. Exa exactly. And, <clears throat> you know, it's not... Um, uh, listen, it's not it's not good for work and business, etc. You know, it's, it's definitely not good for work. And then after after I bought another one in Dunstable, same thing. But I already had a mortgage now, you know. And I found this mobile home park myself. You know, I was in the uh, like now I'm 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 on the ladder. You know, I'm talking to people, people that uh, we buy the homes off of, etc. And um, in any case, he said, right, there's a a mobile home park come up. Do you know what I mean? Like, would it be of interest to you? Yeah. So I've gone back to my bank manager, said, what can we can do? So cut a long story short, ends up getting passed, um, ends up getting passed for another mortgage in Dunstable. And that that's really what really got me on my feet. Like, that was not, I wouldn't say I was made because I don't believe I'd ever be made, you know, but it, like, I was, I was well on the property ladder then. You know, I know, listen, people would say, oh, you had one site already, et cetera. But like, I was going like, I could, that did keep me busy. There was things to do there. Like there was a small developments to do, et cetera. Like I didn't really learn a lot of the first one, you know, because there wasn't a lot to do. It's fully developed. But there was a couple of empty bases or empty plots on this site, which I needed to develop myself, you know, which to be honest is, is uh, it's easy if you know what you're doing. You know, but it's not so easy if you don't know what you're doing, you know. And I was I was learning on the job. And like I say, my dad would give me all, all the advice in the world, what he could, you know, but he just wouldn't, like, gift nothing. Do you understand? Yeah. Like, you know. How hard is it to run one of these holiday homes? It's not easy, you know. You've got residents screaming down you at the phone, you know. The, this, the hardest part is buying them and finding them. You know, finding one for sale. Like, you know, the thing is, how much do you pay for it? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what what do you value it? You know, they're all around the area. You look at one, one could be in, in, in 
Aberdeen and one could be in London and you'll think, God, that one in Aberdeen's cheap. But realistically, it's not in London, you yeah. know? Like, it's, it's, it's like, that's the hard bit, is finding them, you know? It's like anything, you know? It's like nothing's easy to run, but we can get our heads around it and we can do it or we can employ someone that can. How long, when did you start the boxing, what age? Uh, I've been boxing like all my life. Like I've boxed since I've been about six, but obviously I couldn't compete when I was six. But I was in and out of the gym, and then I, and then I started boxing from when I was eleven. I give up when I was sixteen. Turned over when I was nineteen because I I got out of the amateurs. I thought it was far way too corrupt, you know. And to be honest, the, the professionals ain't much different from what I can gather. But <laughs> to be honest, yeah. like I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and like you know I love the sport though I do, and and it is what it is. And it's like there's, there's nothing we can change about it, but um. I started boxing when I was like six and genuinely, I probably didn't stop from six to about 16. And then I did stop because I thought to myself, you know, as a kid, I wanted to live my life a little bit. I wanted to go out. Like, it's very difficult uh, when you're boxing, you know? And uh, I've always struggled with my weight, not like my boxing weight, you know? It wasn't easy. Like we always, like we've had some mad conclusions. Cause my dad used to train me as well, which wasn't the best, to be honest. Mm. Like it works, don't get me wrong, but you never got a break, you know? Like, when you come out of the gym, boxing was still happening when we come home. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes you do need, like, a little bit of your own yeah. time. You know what I mean? And um, then I turned over pro when I was 19. I had my first professional fight, won that. And then, to be honest with you, I got so carried away with work, I didn't box again until last year, which was 2021. I boxed in October, and I was supposed to box on the 27th of November. But I perforated my eardrum. Who? Oh. Sparring. Fuck's sake. And it's, how many shots did you have? Uh, 20. Do you, what's the difference between boxing and making money? What's the buzz? If you, if you get a good deal, make a bit of dough or one in a fight, what's the best buzz? To be honest, without lying to you, there's no better feeling than winning a fight. You know, it lasts for a couple of three or four days, but there's nothing nothing better even as an amateur turning over as a pro like even having a good sparring session you feel good you know but listen you have a bad one you feel bad mm -hmm. you know and losing there is no worse a feeling you want to lock yourself in the room and not come out for years you know what i mean it's a, or for me it's a horrible feeling but the thing is losing money for me i also get that kind of feeling you know it's not it's not a very nice feeling like you know more so to be deceived out of money because you think oh i wasn't clever enough or I wasn't on that do you know what I mean or you if you can see that. something change yeah of course you can learn but initially your first instinct or your first feeling yeah. is not the best do you know what I mean listen of course you want to tell yourself yeah I've learned from that I won't be doing that again because listen if you don't think to yourself that then you're not very bright you know because yeah. listen you've got to take the positives out of every situation whether that may be a bad situation there will be positives in it somewhere but if that's a lesson then great mm -hmm. you need to learn from it where do you go from the boxing? Where do you want to go? Uh, listen, I'd like to take it all the way. I'm that type of person, you know. I want to be a world champion. Um, but it's very good for my life. I want to keep it up. But thankfully, I've uh, I've got a good trainer now. I'm training with Mark Tibbs, which is a good guy. the best, you know. Like, like I, I'm very appreciative for that opportunity and I wouldn't blow it for the world because, you know, if I stopped that a bit, I would never step foot back in a boxing room because now's my opportunity. You know, like if I'm going to go anywhere or I'm going to do anything with this boxing, he's the man to do it with. You know, there's, they've got, what, 50 or 60 years between him and his dad, you know, training in there with monsters, you know, but it's a good atmosphere in that gym. You know, and like I say, if I'm going to do it anywhere and I'm going to do well, it's with him. Yeah. Fair play, man. But do you think you'll use that business mindset to get into the boxing? Is that a business strategy as well? Uh, in what sense? What do you mean? Like, to make money as well. Is that, you can make money from it when you get to the higher levels. Are you just doing it because you enjoy it? I'm not doing it to make money, no. Yeah. But listen, if the opportunity comes <laughs> up and I can get a few quid, please yeah. believe me, I'm obviously not going to turn it down. Mm -hmm. But like, I'm not, not doing it for money. Like, I don't get up and go to the gym thinking to myself, right, one day I'm going to get X mm -hmm. amount. I'll get up there and go and think, right, I, I want to win more than I like, you know. But if I could take the win and not take no money, I'd rather take the win. You know what I mean? I'd rather win. Like, you know, it's, that is, it's a funny thing. I love boxing. Boxing is it's a good sport. Like I say, it keeps your head strong and teaches you a hell of a lot. 
and and you meet some very 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 good people yeah there's loads of great people yeah. there's good people everywhere seeing you were on the tv shows and shit how was that with the fame coming kind of side of did that kind of sidetrack you with partying and whatever other shit you were doing or were you still trying to stay focused because attention is a funny thing when you start getting it, it kind of changes people especially at a young age especially if your dad's successful you're doing well you've got a bit of money you can fucking relax a bit like was that a hard thing getting put into the ling light i didn't particularly like it to be honest listen i i love uh, uh listen i loved it do you know what i mean in the sense everything that come off the back of it do you know what i mean people recognize you it's lovely do you know what i mean you haven't got to explain to yourself who you are but you like you've got a like th there's a level of trust there straight away which is great for business you know um because people that look, watch them programs and they feel like they know you etc which to be honest with you them reality tv programs for me are the furthest thing from reality you know okay yeah they do follow you about with a camera etc and, and they're vi videoing day-to-day -day life but you know they only put up what they want to put up yeah. like that like they, they show what they think is going to put bums on seats mm -hmm. they're going to show what they think is going to get viewers that's how i feel about it you know and, and particularly i didn't enjoy doing it all that much to be honest because there was a couple of things in that program i didn't like you know like what to be honest i wouldn't really like to go into depth about it like you know but because to be honest it's uh I'm good friends with everybody that was on that program, very good friends with everybody that was on that program. And I was very good friends with everybody that created it, you know, and I'm fully aware that you've got to do what you've got to do, you know. But again, like, you know, they was doing too much to put bums on seats, you know. I mean, like, to yeah. be honest with you, for, any, for I'll give you an example. Like, it didn't, but it could have affected people in a worse way. You know, it didn't, and luckily enough, everybody was very headstrong. But it could have could have affected people in in, in a different way. Trying to make a fool of you, in a sense, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's not good for people to sit and have an insight on that. You know, like listen, I, I don't believe people should. That listen, them relationships that happen on them reality TV shows, they're not going nowhere. It's the first thing that's going to bring it to a for, to a straight end. Yeah. You know, and I I couldn't be myself because listen, I, I have a character I want to keep. You know, I'm not going to make a fool of myself to people. Like, I, I couldn't care if nobody liked me on there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a businessman. And that's how I wanted to portray myself. Yeah, not a circus, eh? You know, that's that's it. You know, it's great. And listen, it was great for publicity. You know, I've gained a massive following from it. You know, and I wasn't on it all that much, to be honest. But I felt like I was being forced to do stuff. Like, it didn't just flow freely for me. It's scripted. You know, yeah, yeah. it was it's not scripted, gl but glorified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know, it is it is more or less scripted. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like like listen, it's like for, for an example, it's like you me bringing somebody, here, for example, that you don't like, putting a camera there. Well, obviously something's going to happen because yeah. you don't like each other. That's not reality TV because in reality you wouldn't bump into him. If you see that he was somewhere, you wouldn't go there, would you? Yeah, he's still, Do you know what yeah. I mean? You're going to try and stay away from it. And that's what I didn't like. Setups. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. But that's what sells, isn't it? That's the views. They're of only course. there for the views. Of course. They don't course. give a fuck about and people's I feelings. Because we had a show in uh, Scotland called The Scheme. And they, they, the people didn't even get paid for it. But they were on heroin. They were on all the drugs. Used to film them. And they were all fighting and arguing. And people used to laugh at it. Not realising I actually had one of the, the boys on, Marvin, he was called. And... Um, and he actually sees he's actually a decent guy. Yes, he's got his problems with addiction. But back then, even myself used to laugh at it. I go, you look at the fucking state of them. But then as you get older and you realise that people are human and you, you make mistakes and these people made total fun of them. And it was all in contract. They never get paid a penny. And they just fucking slaughtered them. And it, I think it went up after as well. Yes. Yeah, just threw them all under a bus. It's, it's mad, you know. And like yeah. I said, I'm not like, you know, like, you know, Tao, he's done extremely well. You know, Made in Chelsea's done extremely well. The program I was on wasn't that successful, to be honest. Um, from what I can gather, like I'm just speaking. Yeah, no, I think and it was. Well, I think I'm, it was watched by millions then. Like, I just don't understand why it didn't get recommissioned. If something's successful, then obviously you'd recommission it. It got recommissioned yeah. for a second series, and you know, like I'd think after the first one, they got to give the benefit of doubt on the second one. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on, like, you're just getting going after the first one. Then after the second one, mm -hmm. if you're not cutting cloth, man, then obviously you're going to cut ties and 
you wouldn't blame any television company if you're not putting bums on seats and yeah. what's what's the point what did you do after all that then i started a motorbike track motorbikes yeah because i love bikes like again um i still like to enjoy myself like you know and uh but the thing is when i start to enjoy myself then i'm starting looking for business opportunities Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like i get into something like i used to love bikes you know the boys ended up buying myself a bike and i'm all or nothing person but ended up getting a bike from getting a bike i ended up getting a camper van to go in from having one bike i got two but i brother i went to a like <laughs> to you know what i mean i went to uh i went to a few races i raced a few times i wasn't particularly that good you know i was more game than i was good but i still like you know like my brain's wired up like you know i could break my neck here in a minute do you know what i mean yeah. and like listen in, in that sort of sport you've got to be willing to break your neck you know like listen people have died doing it and uh like you know in any case i i, I started going to a track and i was walking around the track thinking like this is an honor this do you know what i mean like and again motorbikes are like travelers like the government everybody like they don't give you somewhere to ride like it's very far and few between tracks and like it's such a grey area because you don't know. Like I wouldn't know how to set one up. You know, like you know, you got to be in the middle of nowhere. There's houses, etc. And my dad's got a farm in Norfolk, and uh, I said, like, let me put a track there. You know, and uh, um, he went like, oh no, I don't. And when I tell you, it was like this bit of land, genuinely, it was like brambles and stinging nettles. It was genuinely wasn't yeah. worth having. You know, and. Uh, like he said, what are you going to do with it? And you see my dad, if my dad don't understand it, like, you know, he's like, he kind of turns his nose up at it. Like, oh, what do you want that for? He thinks I want to set up a track so I can go down and ride it. And I'm like, I'm telling you, like, I could do all right out of this. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, anyway, I built a track. But again, there's things you don't think of, like it needed watering, you needed kind of electric down there, like a toilet, etc. You know, I never had none of this stuff. Literally, I just mm -hmm. from the ground upwards, bang, built it. And... um it was doing all right. You know, I used to hire it. I used to private hire it out of weekends, etc. And then what happened was uh, the lockdown come, you know, and we obviously wasn't allowed to use it in the, the initial three weeks or the initial six weeks or, or, or when the first lockdown Fucking come in. Fucking two years of bastard lasted No, that. but the thing is, you was allowed to go with your household. Yeah. You know, and everybody had mm -hmm. an excuse. They, everybody was living together, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everyone was living with everybody. And, uh, um, after a while, there was like, there was nowhere to go, you know? And then it, it done well in lockdown, and then uh, I got shut down. Why? I don't know. To be honest with you, I wasn't there, uh, like, I wasn't there, but like, I wouldn't say legally. Like, it's a grey area. Like, mm. I didn't know. I was I built a track, you know? I, I, I just jumped in the deep end. That's what I done, built it. I had it out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that's what it was. And, and then I got issued a stop notice because of the noise. Yeah, like if I went, some yeah, it does. To be honest, I've been at a couple of speedway events, man. Yeah. It's fucking loud. It, it, uh, it, yeah. Listen, the I shouldn't imagine it. Would, like the neighbours was upset, and again, like you know, probably maybe selfish of me to be honest. But again, sometimes you only see dollar signs. Yeah, try to roll the dice and make something but happen. It is, uh, and and the thing is, I tell you what, I loved about it. There was, there was no maintenance really. You know, you just needed to grade the track, get a little bit of water. Brilliant business, mm. but. Again, it's a grey area. You wouldn't know where to start because you could go and buy a bit of land and, you know, there's rules and regulations with everything. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, you know, I'm sure I'm sure the councils and governments make them up as they go along, mm -hmm. you know? And what are you doing now? Watches? I'm buying and sell watches now. What's the most expensive one you've sold? The most expensive one I've sold would probably be about 60 grand. Sorry, I don't know. Is it why, why is the prices of watches still on the rise? If you get a Rolex, I know friends that bought Rolexes five, ten years ago and they've already made five, six grand off them. To be honest with you, they're a brilliant investment at the minute. And, and, and the answer is I actually don't know. They, you know, listen, again, it must be down to not enough supply and, and, and more demand because, like, you know, there, there's watches out there, there's stainless steel watches out there that's making more than a gold watch, full gold. Like, you know... Mm -hmm. Okay, like, like, you know, there's a stainless steel watch out there worth two twenty, two thirty stainless steel. Like, okay, listen, if you was to take a watch and go and weigh it in, you're not going to get nowhere near like the equivalent of the watch. You know, so obviously, it kind of that's why it don't make no much of a difference. But it's always been that the precious metals worth more money, 
And as the times are the times are changing, it, it's not like that, you know. Like stainless steel is massive, and they're they're making so much money over this. And to be honest, I, I just I don't I don't know why they've gone. It's mad, do not it? Uh, they've gone. I think the lockdown had, had played a big part in it because mm. obviously the factories had to close. You know, um, like the Rolex factory, um, and there is only a certain amount uh, every day. And to try and get one out of the shop is 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 like nigh on impossible. Yeah. Like it more or less can't be done. What are you doing with your life? Like, do you, do you still try? Because you're very sensible. You've got your head screwed on. But how hard is it to try and not go fucking off the rails and, and enjoy your freedom and life? And and like I say, you were in Dubai earlier. And like, how hard is it to try and keep sensible at a young age? Because when I was your age, man, I was fucking bang on it, and I never had much. So if I had though, then man, I'd have went fucking mental. Listen, I've I've listened. I go out, do you know what I mean? I go, I get drunk. I've, I've done in bed for two or three days. I do go out, do you know what I mean? Listen, I like, I, don't, I, I kind of don't promote that side of me. Of course I like going out. I like eating in nice restaurants, but, you know, I put business first. So, and, and obviously I put boxing first, you know, and, and, that, and, and boxing is also very good for my business because it gives me a reason not to go out, you know, and like I say, I appreciate life a lot more. When is your next fight? I haven't got a clue. I think it's next month in April. Fingers crossed. You buzzing? Yeah, I can't wait. To be honest, do you? Is that for your opponents? You think they're up against it more against you than any other person? Well, I'm an, I'm, because a lot of boxers will maybe want to box to try and make money. And you know how fucking ruthless it is. There's not that much money to be made unless you're a, a top ten fighter. Like you're fighting for the buzz and the love of it. Okay, well, I'm not a massive name in the boxing yet, mm -hmm. but I'm still a name. It's yeah, still a yeah, name yeah. to beat, you know, to come out and say, ah, oh, I've beat Alfie Best Jr., mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? It's a it's fucking still, great name, man, Alfie you know, Best. Could be worse, brother. Isn't it? <laughs> Alfie Best, that is a great name. Like, but do you think, do you, would you, do you think you'll feel that? Like, people want to, because when you're a celebrity kind of status and you're doing well for yourself, listen, people want to, people don't like that. No, people are envious. No. Um, uh, more than likely, but again, I can't, I can't worry about that too much. Listen, you got to think that they want to get in there and kill you no matter what, you know? So listen, it'll just keep me sharp, keep me more on the game. Do you, you know get I mean? a lot of trolls? A lot of trolls talking shit? Yeah, loads, loads, yeah. Because your Instagram is popping, you've got all the best clobber on, you're travelling the world, it's a good thing to see for anybody that is not bitter, enjoys to see somebody doing well, but if you're not in a good place in life, you fucking no. hate that shit. No, but listen, in, in, in a sense, listen, I can't respond to every message that, that comes to me, do you know what I mean? I'd be a liar to say that I could, but some I flick through, you know, some people that reach out to help. And do you know what? The thing is, I'll tell you what ruins it for the people that do reach out, reach out for help and that are being genuine is the people that are not being genuine that are reaching out, oh, I've got this going on, blah, 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 because you, then you just flick through them all thinking to yourself, you know, like, why am I going to help you? You know, it's a scam or whatever it is, mm. do you know what I mean? But I do try and filter through to the ones that are legitimate and I will try and do my best to, to, to help. Listen, it's a message at the end of the day. You know, if I've got time on my hands, like, you know, it is good to help people, even if you've never met them in your life and that's what's a good thing about Instagram, you know, and people remember that. You know, you never know. If I could put someone on the right road, they come back to me in 10 years and be... Uh, a, in Parliament, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a long, 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 long life. You know, and mm -hmm. I try and listen, I'm never going to please everybody and I don't try to. But we now live in a world where you can't say what's on your mind, you know? And I'm in a position not to be able to say what's on my mind. Like, for an example, like, let's say I do exceptional at boxing and I get sponsors. It, like, I'm, listen, I love all people. Please believe me, and I'm and I mean that, and I mean it with a good heart. I do genuinely listen. There's obviously some individuals I don't like, but you know, race, colour, sexuality, it, it doesn't bother me, you know. But I do appreciate people's opinions. Like everybody's got their own opinion. There might be a reason why some people don't like somebody for whatever reason. I think it's wrong, but that's up to them, you know. We're all our own person, and you know, you. For example, if you was to criticise someone's culture or something, you'll never get sponsored by the likes of Nike or Adidas because the thing is, that culture would then hate you for the rest of your life and then if you were sponsored by Nike, they are not going to go and buy off a of Nike anymore. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's difficult to speak what's on your mind. You know, we we don't live in a world where we can. No, everything's but, you fucking. Know? You, everything is weird just now, man. You certain things you can't mention, and I thought people being offended. But living in a fucking weird world, but it's also a place where we, you can be anything that you want to be, which is a good thing. But I just don't, even comedians and I, I, I've got dark humour, so I like to see people talk shit. But now. Even I think comedians are being watered down. Which I never thought I would see. Some comedians that don't give a fuck, but I think a lot of people are scared. Did you now. watch? Did you watch Jimmy Carr's one the other day? Yeah, he doesn't give a fuck, mate. Yeah, and I watched him. Um, but did you see the one he put about travellers? Yeah. No. You haven't. Seen is that the a one? new one? Oh, brother, oh. he's he's done one about travellers. Which brother was was? was what did he say? It was it was wrong, man. Do you know? Is that the one that's on Netflix? Are, I, I haven't got a clue, but since he's come out, but I've basically, seen him, Dave Chappelle's as well, and Dave Chappelle went through the fucking. He was going on about the. Uh, he was going on about the Holy Cast, and uh, like, listen again. Yeah, I seen that clip somewhere. He was going on yeah, about yeah, the Holy yeah, Cast, yeah. and he said, "Oh, nobody mentioned how many travellers got killed mm -hmm. because nobody ever wants to mention the positives." Like, seen that? Mm, fucking you know seen that? I mean, that? I thought, like, you know, but again, you couldn't say that about any other race. Mm -hmm. He would have been dragged out there in a pair of cuffs if yeah. it was anybody else, you know? Like, and I think it was a pretty sore thing to say because, listen, joke, I'll do all the jokes in the world, but when you're joking about, like, a mass murder mm -hmm. like that, you know, if he would have said it about Fuck Jewish people, people, people would have been, I think it was Twitter, I would have been that pulling one. their hair out, you know? Mm -hmm. And again, I'm thick-skinned, I don't care, it's his job, yeah. you know? But, you know, you don't, like, listen, people, I don't, I wouldn't imagine they remember any of their relatives, but people have got family that died in there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But again, it's their job. And listen, I'd like to think that it was said with with no intent. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to put bums on seats and, and yeah. make people laugh. Do you know what I mean? Everybody laughed at it. it was in that stadium. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And again, it, would, like, it doesn't bother me. Like, I'm not affected thinking, oh, I yeah. want to kill see if you were, See if you were there. Mean? See if you were there. And they told that joke, like, would you have been offended? Uh... No, Especially not, everybody laughing not, at that. Not, like, not, 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 like, listen, it wasn't a very nice thing to say. And then when people kind of explain it to you and go into detail, you think, oh, yeah, that was wrong. Do you know what I mean? But mm. then on the other side of the coin, if you looked up and went, like, hold on a minute, he's a comedian. Yeah. He hasn't pointed you out. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on, think of all the jokes that people have made up about other races and religions in the past. And listen, it's, it's been cut down now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Terribly. If you go back to some of the old ones, yeah. like, you know, and listen, you'd laugh your ass off. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's all changed. Like so, Chubby Browns and Eddie Murphy's back in the day. And, like, they were ruthless. Everything has been kind of watered down, but like your Jimmy Cars and Dave Chappelle's, I think Dave Chappelle was talking about um, transgender and they just came for him, try to shut him down, cancel him. And that's what people do. We're living in that cancel culture. But you can understand why people do get offended. But... When the comedy side of things, if there's no malice towards it, then by all means, fucking laugh yeah, and joke. Yeah, that's it. Me. That's the way I see it. Listen, I'm, I don't discredit anybody for trying to, to, to better their self. You know, mm. it, is, it is what it is. And listen, he obviously wanted to say a joke that's gone viral. Let me tell you something. What people don't understand, everybody, whether it's good or bad, people are, you know, screen recording it, put it on their story. That's giving him views. Yeah. Now people's probably going on Netflix, going, right, I want to see that. I want to see it from start to finish. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's still promoting him. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that's why some people talk some shit the way they do as well, because they know it does promote them yeah. well. It's free publicity, and it makes money. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. crazy. Where does Alfie Best go from here? Listen, I'm just because I followed the journey, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm confident that I'm going to be, like, I want to be a billionaire. Do you know what I mean? Off mm -hmm. my own back. And listen, that, you know, one day, like, and I hope, I genuinely hope, any day not too soon, Listen, obviously, such as life, everybody dies. Do you know what I mean? My dad's going to die. The company's going to get passed down to me. And when it does, I am going to take it. I will have my own business tenfold time then. Do you know what I mean? I hope so, because I want him to be here and see what I've achieved, mm -hmm. you know? I will take his business to the next level, and we'll just have two, you know? How much pressure is that from you, knowing that your dad's so successful, from his son, 24, trying to replicate that and more like is, do you feel a little added pressure from your dad that nah, no matter what you do just, he's always going to back you he's pressure just by himself do you know what I mean like him being there just his presence <laughs> is pressure do you know what I mean <laughs> or it is for me and uh, in a sense yeah 
in a sense, it actually gives me more of a drive. Do you know what I mean? To think, right, look, he's broke his back. Look where he is. It works. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it works. It, it mm. does work. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, if your role model was not successful, like, then why are they your role model? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this man who is so successful, he's around me and with me all the time. It's like second nature. It's like it's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? How big is your family? Kids, brothers, sisters? I've only got, uh, I've only got one sister. And that's it? Yeah, one so, sister. It's fucking unbelievable what your dad and that's achieved and it's good to see you on the same track trying to do what he's trying to do and, and push yourself. Like, like I say, everything's limitless to where you want to go in life and no doubt with the things that you've learned from your dad, the mistakes that you've made and the businesses that you've succeeded in, like put all that together, man, you've just got a big fucking pot of whatever you want to make it and it's mad that life is mad, isn't it? Do you not think? Like, I think that, like, what the fuck is it about, Alfie? Really? Well, that's it. It's what it's about. Whatever you want it to be about, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's, it's whatever you want to achieve and whatever you want to do. There is, there is. Listen, there's more than one obstacle stopping you doing from whatever you want to do. Do you know what I mean? I'm not being funny. If you want to get in the car and drive to a restaurant, there's obstacles. There's doors in your way that you've got to open. Do you know what I mean? That's the same as anything. You know what I mean? You've got to go and find the car keys. You've got to go and get in the car. It's an obstacle. Everything's stopping you from doing anything. You know, yeah. and you just got to get your head around that. And and and. Uh, the quicker you learn that not, nothing is gifted to you, mm -hmm. trust me, the easier life will be, you know? For anybody that's maybe watching just now, that's maybe wanting to start up a business, like, it can be any small business, big business, what advice would you give for them? Like I say, once again, persistence is, is, is the only thing. Listen, you don't need education. I educate yourself on the subject. And to be honest with you, personally, I would stick, to be successful at anything, I'd, I'd Definitely, definitely try and do something that you enjoy. Like, you know, like, that's a job halved. Go on and do something you enjoy that you're looking forward to, to get up and go and do. That gives you some spirit and inspiration by itself. You know, something you enjoy. Like these podcasts, you enjoy doing them. If you yeah. didn't like them, you know, there wouldn't be the same feel about it. You wouldn't be reaching out to people to try and get good podcasts on mm -hmm. the go. So, you know, something you enjoy. But the thing is, unfortunately... Sometimes that ain't the way for success, you know. Like sometimes you might not make it at something you enjoy. I'm sure there's plenty of boxers or plenty of sportsmen out there that probably don't enjoy what they're doing, you yeah. know. But they're so good at it that mm -hmm. that they they need to stick at it. And also, I'd stick to what you know, the best you can if you can, mm -hmm. you know. Like you know, if you've if you've got a family business, etc., or your dad runs a company, you know, because they've they've been through it, and obviously, course, the times are changing, etc. But I'd, I'd stick to something that you know. Yeah. Would you like to finish up on anything, brother? No, that's it. Thank you very much for having me in the... Uh, honestly, the, it's been a privilege. Yeah. And I'm that grateful for being here. Alfie, <laughs> listen, I wish you all the best for the future. Look forward to your fight. Are we going to get for your social media? Where can people get you? Alfie uh, Best, Instagram. Al Alfie underscore best. Everything can be all posted on my Instagram. Good, brother. Listen, I wish you all the best for the future. Thanks for coming on and telling your story, bro. Thank you God very much. God bless you.